Beware of Greeks bearing gifts is an old saying relating back to the destruction of Troy through the gift of a horse. We know the horse as the Trojan horse because it was how the Greeks got inside the city of Troy to end the Ten-Year-Old War. It was given as an apparent peace offering for the Trojans, who, thinking the Greeks had left, brought it inside the city. Instead, it actually contained soldiers who slipped out in the night and opened the gates for the Greek army that had returned under the cover of darkness. In a similar way, people who overdo praise and compliments can be just as deceptive and destructive, which is why God's prophets are seldom appreciated in their day. When God sent Amos to Bethel, Israel's religious center, he came bearing a true gift, the truth. Rather than compliments and praise, his message began with a bold declaration that Jehovah was speaking, and it wasn't good. Amos 1 verse 2. No wonder he was told to shut up and go away. Amos 7 verse 12. Today's Throwback Thursday edition of Morning Minutes in the Bible on An American Missionary takes a somewhat humorous look at the gift of excessive compliments instead of honesty and accuracy. From Plain Talk Magazine, November 1972. Great Swelling Words by Robert F. Turner. One time I was in a meeting where the local preacher either thought very highly of my work or had read too many Win Friends and Influence People books. I like to think it was the former. For several nights he spent much time praising me until I asked him to cease and desist, saying, I just can't stand praise. The next night, he made a few reserved remarks, explaining, Brother Turner tells me he has an intense dislike for praise. That was not so. He had misunderstood me because he was an outlander and did not know the American translation of my Kentucky speech. I had said, being interpreted, my system can't take it. It swells my head. I get to believing it and then make a mess out of my sermon. I can't stand it. After having a heat stroke, a fellow can't stand much sun. A person with a diabetic condition cannot stand molasses, poor soul. Lots of folk can't stand prosperity. They let it make a fool out of them or show them up for the fool they had kept hidden. But this doesn't mean they dislike prosperity. Oh no, just about everyone likes praise although some may have learned from bitter experience to distrust it and become a bit wary when it is poured on thickly. And genuine encouragement, expressions of confidence, etc., help to build one's self-respect and self-confidence, without which we may fail to measure up to our potential. Because we need some of this, and enjoy getting more than we need, praise becomes a commodity that must be accepted with a great deal of control. Weight Watcher, do not look on pie. Some Australians call Americans great palaverers, and they dislike this trait. I agree with them. I think we could do with a lot less backslapping, syrup pouring, compliment as a policy talking, and get our words of encouragement into a better yay and nay frame. Of course, not everyone has a tender head like mine. The preacher was real thoughty. He said he understood what I meant now and would do better in the future. Once again, Robert's right. Our compliments, like our criticisms, need to be genuine, honest, and accurate, and moderate. When we give and get true compliments, we will be better prepared to give and receive honest correction. Too many great swelling words lead to great swelling heads, and that's a gift all of us should be aware. Thank you for watching this Throwback Thursday edition of Morning Minutes in the Bible on An American Missionary. Until next time, this is James McClenney hoping you have a great day.